Magic Media on YouTube, T1 Glister Elf here. Here's a vintage deck that I made up. This is, as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen anyone else do anything stupid and silly like this. This is Coveted Jewel or Jewel Shops. This is a Mishra's Workshop deck revolving around this card. It is a 6 mana, so it's Gilded Lotus, so taps to make 3 mana of any color. Uh, but it also ETBs uh, draw 3 cards, and it has this neat little trigger that hopefully you never have to come across. Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls attacks you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of it, untap it. Yeesh, that's not great. So this card, as you can see, was made for a commander set, and it's meant to be a commander card, and it's a fun commander card. But we're trying to break it in vintage of all things. Now, it is six mana, that is really expensive. You are getting to draw three cards and make three mana, though, turn after turn. Not that you need the turn after turn part. Hopefully you're doing this all on one turn. That's right, this is a combo deck. So we start off, we have our jewels. Of course, we have four of them. And then we have Phyrexian Metamorph. Shoutouts to whoever did this altar, but... Okay, so Phyrexian Metamorph is three mana. Ignore the Phyrexian mana, it's three mana. And it becomes Coveted Jewel. You can use it for other things. What we care about is having a Coveted Jewel that you can tap Coveted Jewel to get. So, Coveted Jewel comes in, you draw three cards, hopefully there's a Metamorph in there, and you bring it in as a copy of Coveted Jewel, draw three more cards, you have three more mana to work with. Eventually, the game plan is to get to Kaldotha Forge Master Lightning Greaves. Now, Kaldotha Forge Master says, tap, sack three artifacts, you get to tinker. You get to search your library for an artifact and put it on the battlefield. Great! Uh, and with Lightning Greaves, we give it haste. There's not a whole lot of targeted removal, let alone that beats a Kaldotha Forge Master, but there is some, but what we care about really is haste. It's a two mana artifact that equips for zero, and we give it to Kaldotha Forge Master, but also Blightsteel Colossus. So on the board, Forge Master Lightning Greaves, you equip the Lightning Greaves, uh, tap Sack 3 Artifacts itself if you need to, to get Bloodsteel Colossus, then move the Lightning Greaves over to that because, again, equip for zero, and then you have an 11-11 Trample Infect Indestructible Hasty Iron Giant, Phyrexian Iron Giant, and that's the game. That's, that's ideally what you're trying to do. There are other ways to win as well, uh, but real quick, really quickly, it's not so great when you have Coveted Jewel and you draw three cards and you can't play anything else, or any other jewels at least, for that turn. So ideally you have something like Foundry Inspector and three Jorivis Familiar to try to decrease the cost of your artifacts. Uh, Jorivis Familiar is historic spells. In the context of this deck, that's just artifacts. It's all artifacts and lands. Uh, otherwise, they're functionally the same card. We'd run more Inspectors if we could, but we can't, so we run some Familiars. And, of course, we have Mystic Forge to let us draw through the top of our deck. Seems good. This thing is restricted for a reason. Uh, and then also, if we get stuck on top, we can just tap it. There we go. Ex well, not, you know, exile the top card of your library to try to keep yourself going. If you've already played your land, for instance. Uh, then we have the Time Machine combo as well. So, you could go and get Blightsteel, but you can also just go and get Time Vault or naturally draw into it, along with three Manifold Key. Now, Manifold Key is a little weird as a three of. That's way higher than you normally see. But it serves a few functions in the deck. It can untap... Uh, you're gonna see we have Mana Vault in here. Uh, but even off of a Soul Ring or a Mana Vault, you can net mana, but oh yeah, Coveted Jewel makes three mana. So... That's another thing you can do. Uh, Coveted Jewel, tap three, uh, play the Manifold Key, pay one, untap it, make three again. Just on that turn, you've netted one. So, great! That's pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, it has the backup that it, it makes your Blightsteel unblockable. <laughs> uh, we have Chalice, which we can play on zero for on the play, otherwise we put it on something like one often to beat a, an opposing blue deck, for instance. You, there's almost nothing in this deck that's CMC1, just some mana stuff, and Manifold Key. We have Sphere of Resistance, which seems a little odd. Why are we playing that and Foundry Inspector in the same deck? For the same reason that Ravager Shops does. It is unfortunately going to hurt our combo a little bit, but we're a big mana deck. We're more likely to have the time to be able to build the mana to go off anyway. It's not great to have a 7 mana Gilded Lotus that Ancestral Recalls as well, uh, but if your opponent's having to pay the price as well, it might be alright. 
Uh, well, then, of course, we have one Thorn of Amethyst. We have a few creatures, but it's it's mostly going to hurt us, too. But it's restricted for a reason. It's really good. Uh, Trinisphere as another hate piece. Lodestone Golem as a win con and another hate piece. Uh, now we get into the mana rocks in the deck. The other mana rocks. The, the ones you typically see. We have uh, good old Lotus, Black Lotus. We have Moxen, all of them. We have Soul Ring, Mana Vault, because we need the mana. We have four Mishra's Workshop, of course. It's a shops deck. This is insane. This is silly. I kind of like that it's not restricted, but if I wouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> if it gets there at some point. We have four in Ancient Tomb. Uh, a little bit less mana, and we have to pay life. Still worth it. Still pretty good. Uh, Telerian Academy makes all of the mana, officially all of the mana. Uh, Strip Mine and Wasteland. Now, I'm actually running three Ghost Quarter as part of the Flex Light. Whoa, 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 first. So we have Inventor's Fair, and there's one mana rock I missed, which is Mana Crypt. You know, just make, a, make as much mana as quickly as possible. So, Inventor's Fair, uh, sack it, you know, the life gain is fine. That's not what you're playing it for. You sack it and you can search your library for an artifact card. Reveal it, put it in your hand so whatever piece you're missing. And then there you go. Now, for Ghost Quarter, th there are a few flex slots, and I've been considering two cards primarily. Ghost Quarter is basically strip mine two through four in most matchups. It gives you a lot you can put in against other shops decks make it where they only get one turn out of their Mistress Workshop, for instance, but most importantly, it's Dredge, uh, because of Bizarre Baghdad, and Survival nowadays as well. Uh, when you have Ghost Quarter, you have even more ways to destroy those, and so it gives you a decent matchup. However, because this is a combo deck, uh, and so, you know, I'm not running something like, I'm not Ravager Shops, it's not Mistress Factory, uh, but you could run this handy little card. This is Zalfarin Void. ETB scry 1. Now, it doesn't come in tapped, and it lets you scry 1, and it makes the mana we care about, which could be anything. Uh, but yeah, that's something you can do to help early game filter through, uh, you know, filter through bad cards, cards that you don't want to draw. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something you can consider as well, but there's more interaction with Ghost Quarter. It does have the downside that it's not always strip mine. There are decks that are going to be running, say, Basic Islands especially. Uh, so a lot of blue decks, they'll still get a land out of this. Because of that, mm, I could see it going either way, but Ghost Quarter has been tried and truer, I think. So, uh, And it gives you interaction against matchups that are, can be fast and generally uninteractive, like Dredge. So for the sideboard, I have not dismember there. I have Crucible of Worlds because it lets us recur our land destruction. Even if we took out the Ghost Quarter, we'd still bring it in. Uh, Strip Mine, Wasteland, and Venture's Fair. And if we get hit by opposing um, uh, land destruction ourselves, this can get it back. Dismember as one of our removal spells. Uh, one mana, four life. It's a shop snuff out, I guess. It's fine. Then we have four Graft Digger's Cage, which hurts us a little bit. Uh, you're probably going to be taking out Kaldotha Forge Master, except, oh wait a minute, creature cards can't enter the battlefield from graveyards or libraries. So you can still get, you know, uh, Manifold Key or Time Vault. They're not creatures, so you can still assemble a Time Machine combo, but you're not getting Blightsteel Colossus off of this. Uh, and then we have Sorcerer's Spyglass, something that we can use against uh, decks that have activated abilities off Planeswalkers or part of their combo. You get the idea. Uh, and then we have Tormod's Crypt. Now, specifically Tormod's Crypt, not just because we have even more graveyard hate, you can tell what matchup I don't want to come across. I don't have, like, Walking Ballista to fight Dredge like you normally would. Walking Ballista, you can remove all of its counters and get rid of their bridge from below. You can't do that here. So I'm a little more worried about Dredge than would normally be the case. Uh, so, but they're also zero mana. So that helps out with Mystic Forge, that's easier to draw into and play. Uh, next we have Warping Whale, which is another removal spell, and it's a bit of a catch-all. It's a card that's in here to do a little bit of everything. It counters sorceries, it exiles creatures, and it actually ramps you on mana if you need to. End of turn, make a 1-1 one, one that sacks itself for 1 mana. If you need to, and that can also be a blocker, you get the idea. It's, it's fun, it's fun. And then 3 Warm Coal Engine for opposing shop decks. This is a little bit tricky for them to be often. It'll put us ahead on life. It has death touch, so even if they make a huge Ravager, this still is going to be a problem for them. It's something they're going to have to deal with. And, uh, yeah, it's it makes more of itself, too. So it's, it's pretty good <laughs> in that matchup. 
Uh, you could also run something like Karn in the sideboard to bring in against shops. That's fine as well. Uh, and then Karn, of course, can go and get one of your other cards, like a worm coil. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So that's coveted shops or jewel shops. I know somewhere out there there has to be some because this is a deck that I didn't net deck. This is something I made myself. I'm operating under the assumption that I'm missing something. There has to be something somebody out there can think of to improve this deck. It has to be. So if you have any suggestions at all, by all means, throw them out at me and I'll, I'll see what we can do. See if we can work something better up. Um, but yeah, that's it. Take care, Magic Community. This has been T1 Glistener Elf. I will see you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>